Good morning, Marines. My name is Staff Sergeant Nelson, and I'm here to show you how to properly maintain and service the M2 50 Cal M2A1. First step is to clear the weapon. So you're going to open up the top cover latch, make sure the bolt is forward. What you're going to do is you're going to pull back on the charging handle, locking the bolt to the rear, inspect the chamber, inspect the bolt face, make sure there is not a live round, and then you're going to press the bolt latch right here between your butterfly trigger, and you're going to ride the bolt back forward. Going into disassembly, make sure that bolt is forward so that there's no tension on your spring. Pull both latches on the back plate, field strip, pull out on the latch, up on the back latch, and we're going to remove the back plate. Once we remove the back plate, we're going to immediately remove this spring. Spring comes out, take the charging handle, pull back slightly to remove our bolt stud. Bolt stud comes into that cutout, we're going to put it underneath the rear sight so we don't lose it. Put our finger through the buffer here. You're going to take a punch and you're going to push in on the buffer body lock, releasing all the internals. Pull those out, set those aside. Once we're there, we're going to remove the bolt from the top of the barrel extension, push on the accelerator tips to remove the barrel extension from the buffer body. We're going to take a punch and we're going to push out the pin for the accelerator and we're going to remove our buffer. After we remove the buffer, we're going to take our bolt, cock and lever to the rear, press on the sear with our punch, relieving the, the tension on the firing pin extension. We're going to pull this pin, removing our cocking lever, use our cocking lever to slide over our sear stop, flip it over, push that sear stop out. After we push that sear stop out, we're going to press on the sear, sear slide comes across, sear can come out, take out the sear spring and the firing pin. Firing pin comes off the firing pin extension. Lift up on the extractor, slide that off, take our bolt switch, slide that out. Bolt is now complete. Next we're going to take out our trigger bar. There is a pin on the left side that flips up, rotates 90 degrees, and then you pull that out, relieving, releasing the trigger bar. Last step is we're going to remove our car cartridge stops and our belt holding paws. So we're going to pull this pin, removing the rear cartridge stop and the front cartridge stop, press down on the belt holding paws on the springs, pull that pin, remove the holding paws and the two springs, and that completes field strip. And the two springs, and that completes field strip. Putting it back together from field strip, we're going to work just in reverse the way we did. Put our two springs, belt holding paws go on top of the springs, Press down, push this pin, all the way through. Front cartridge stop slides in, rear cartridge stop locks in. Take our pin, go through both. Next we're going to do a trigger bar. Trigger bar hole has to be on top, cutout has to be forward. We're going to put that underneath our timing nut, slide it all the way forward, keeping pressure up on the trigger bar the entire time. Our pin kind of looks like a key. It's going to go in vertically till it locks into the trigger bar. Once it does, we're going to rotate it 90 degrees, lock it down, locks in our trigger bar. We're going to reassemble the bolt, take our firing pin extension, slide the firing pin into the extension, making sure this cutout is down because that is the part that locks onto the sear. Slide our firing pin in, lift up slightly, letting it fall forward. Take our sear spring and we're going to stab it with the cocking lever. Set that in the back of the bolt into the little cutout for the spring. Set the sear on top of the spring. Remove our cocking lever. And as we press down on the sear, slide our sear slide across the back. Sear stop. Put the pin in. We're going to press it down. And once it's down, we're going to lock it back over to the left. Cocking lever. Flat side up, wavy side down. Set that into the bolt. Take the pin. Slide that in, locking the cocking lever in. At this point, we're going to lock, we're going to push the cocking lever all the way forward because the cocking lever has to be in the forward position prior to assembling it back into the receiver. Now we're going to take our bolt switch. Right now our gun is set to feed up from the left, so we're going to make sure it is on the left track of the bolt. Bolt switch goes in, er, extractor comes in vertically, lays down. Take our buffer body. Accelerator is going to go back into the buffer body, making sure the accelerator, the round, is on the way up, matching the arms. Put the pin through the accelerator. And then we're going to take the buffer, making sure this, buff, this buffer protrusion follows this guide on the right. So we're going to insert the buffer into the buffer body. We're going to 
we're going to install the buffer body onto the barrel extension. Three things have to happen. The rods of the buffer body have to follow the grooves in the barrel extension. The accelerator has to wrap around the barrel extension. And this part of the barrel extension has to lock into the buffer. So when we put this in, arms go in, accelerator comes up. I use my thumb to push down on the barrel extension, lock it into the buffer. Buffer is locked in. Next, we're going to put our bolt on top or back into the barrel extension. There's a rail system inside your barrel extension that follows the grooves on the bolt. The bolt rides in those grooves. We're going all the way forward. Now we are ready to put it into the receiver. I'm going to support it, drop it into the receiver, push forward, lifting up slightly, back down, pushing in. At this point, you're going to put your palm against the buffer, pushing it all the way up into the receiver. The bolt is going to be locked to the rear at this point. What we're going to do is lift up on the bolt latch, and we're going to push the bolt in. Take our bolt stud, insert it into the bolt, and push it forward till we find the cutout, inserting it all the way, pushing it all the way forward. Take our spring. Spring goes through the back of the bolt. Push that in. Lock it into the receiver. Take our back plate. Slide it on here. Engage both latches and lock it down. That completes field strip. All right, detailed disassembly of the top cover. We're going to remove the cotter pin. Take our belt lever, belt feed lever, and we're going to slide it over to the middle of the window, lifting up and out. Once we lift that out, we're going to take our feed slide. There's a pin that holds this all together. We're going to take our punch, compress the spring, push that pin out, releasing our belt holding paw, spring, belt arm, slide. Next, we're going to remove this flat spring that holds for the top cover latch. Lift up with the screwdriver, pull back, flat spring comes out. Then the extractor spring. Keep your hand over top of it. Take the corner of your screwdriver, insert it into that cutout, pop it over, flat spring comes out. And that is complete disassembly of the top cover. Okay, putting it back together, we're going to take our extractor spring. Cut or the fork end goes over the top of the stud. We're going to press down, locking that in. Take our flat spring for our latch. Make sure the latch is in the down position. Put the flat spring on, push down and forward. Make sure we have tension on that latch. Take our slide. Belt holding paw, belt feed arm, goes on top. We're going to insert the spring into the feed paw. The spring kind of looks like a boot. The toes of the spring have to face away from the arm. So we're going to insert the spring into the paw, drop it onto our feed slide, compress. Once we compress, we're going to insert our pin. Pin goes in. You can compress the spring, give it a couple taps on the table until the pin is fully seated. Slide is going to come in from the left because we are feeding from the left. Slide that in. Take our belt feed lever, insert it on top of the arm, making sure the belt feed lever slides into the slide. Push that down. Then we're going to pull our belt feed lever to the left, making sure that detent seats all the way. Take our cotter pin. Cotter pin goes from the top down, locking in the belt feed lever, and that is complete. Disassembly of the back plate. We're going to start with the two latches. Take the back of a punch, push out the cotter pin, holding in the pin for that latch. Cotter pin, knock the pin out, and this latch will come off. Next, we're going to move this latch. There's a spring underneath, and there's a pin holding that in. Make sure to cover that spring so the spring does not go flying. Push in on the, on the pin with a punch. Knock that pin out. Take that latch off. Latch and spring. Flip, this, flip your back plate over. Next, we're going to remove our butterfly trigger and our bolt latch. Same thing. Has a pin that holds them in. Two springs in front. Cover those springs. To remove these, our weapon has to be in fire. So ensure the safety is on fire. Put our hand over the springs. Push in on the, on the pin. Knock the pin out. And then we're going to lift up on, these, on the latch and the trigger, removing our two springs. And we can remove those two latches. Now we're going to remove this plug and the, the washers. So you're going to turn this sleeve from to 6 o'clock, 
turn it to seven, and you're going to lift up halfway. After we lift up halfway, we're going to take our big screwdriver and we're going to remove the plug. Once our plug is all the way out, we can remove this sleeve, the plug, remove the washers, and the buffer plate. And that is complete disassembly of the back plate. Reassembling. We're going to take our buffer plate, making sure the cap of it is up. It has to protrude out the front of the back plate. Once it does that, we're going to insert our washers making sure the washers sit completely flat. Once the washers are in, we're going to install our plug, screwing it all the way down until it hits the detent. Once it hits that detent, it won't go any farther until we compress that detent. So we're going to take a small screwdriver and we're going to compress that detent, spin the plug, and spin the handles at the same time until the detent is recessed. Once that detent is recessed, we can screw this plug the rest of the way down. Once you get the plug as far as it'll go, you have to make sure the crease of the plug sits or perpendicular to the handles. So it, this is as tight as it'll go. We will loosen it and the detent will sit in its proper position, making sure that the buffer plate should not move. Now we're going to take our two latches, or our, our trigger and our bolt latch. Bolt latch goes underneath the trigger sitting to the left. You're going to pinch the top of the two latches and you're going to drop it into the window of the back plate. Once that is in the window of the back plate, you're going to take the spring and put it on the trigger portion. Put that spring underneath the top of the back plate. Take your pin, start your pin on the trigger side. Lift up on the right side of the trigger and the front of the trigger simultaneously. Simultaneously, and as we, once we do, we're going to push our pin until it starts locking in the trigger. Take your spring, put it in the bolt latch, put it underneath the top part of the back plate, lift up on both simultaneously, pushing the pin in the rest of the way, making sure it is flush right there. Flip this over. You're going to take this latch, insert the spring. There's a cutout for the spring. We're going to put that spring on that cutout, pushing our latch down, Take your pin, pin goes through the latch. Take our other latch, it slides over the top of the handles. Slides over the top, take our pin, go from the bottom up. Take our cotter pin, straight leg of the cotter pin, slides through that pin. Last step, take your sleeve, push your sleeve back over the top and that completes detailed assembly of the back plate. All right, the next step we're going to do is verify headspace and timing. We need to insert the barrel. Insert the barrel, making sure this lug follows the groove on the barrel support. Push back 3 eighths of an inch on the charging handle, push the bolt barrel in, locking the bolt in. First step, charging the weapon to make sure that firing pin is retracted. Lift up on the cartridge extractor. We're going to pull back 1 16th of an inch on the bolt to remove the slack. Insert our headspace gauge. Push down with firm pressure. The gauge should not go through. Headspace is verified. Next, we're going to flip our gauge over and we're going to pull back on the charging handle and we're going to put our no fire gauge in between the barrel extension and the trunnion block with the beveled edge against the barrel. Gauge goes in, put the weapon on fire. Press the butterfly trigger, weapon should not fire. Remove the no fire gauge, insert the fire gauge in the same position. Press the butterfly trigger, weapon should fire. Headspace and timing is verified. 
So if our weapon failed headspace verification, now we need to fix the headspace. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the back plate and take our weapon apart so we can get to the breech lock. The breech lock sits in your barrel extension. This is your breech lock here. We're going to remove our old breech lock and we're going to install the master breech lock. Once that's installed, we're going to put our weapon back together. And we are going to install our master barrel gauge. Once that's installed, make sure our firing pin is retracted, lift up in the cartridge extractor, and we're going to use our breech lock selection gauges. They are numbered from 16 to 1. We're going to start with the highest number, 16, and work our way down. So what we're going to do, just like as if we were verifying headspace, we're going to pull back 1 16th of an inch on the bolt, try to insert the gauge. There's a line on each of these gauges that it, once it falls below that line, you'll know that it the gauge has inserted into the headspace. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, and four. Four goes in. So four is going to be our size. So now we are going to remove our master barrel. We're going to take our weapon apart. And now we are going to put a size 4 breech lock into our barrel extension. Size 4 breech lock. Reinstall the weapon. Put our master barrel back in. And now we are going to use our headspace gauge that has the go and no go on it. At this point with size 4, the go gauge should go in, which it does. The no go gauge should sit or should not enter or should be very tight which that is as well. If the go gauge will not enter, you're going to take this weapon back apart and you're going to re replace that breech lock with one size smaller and then repeat all the steps of, re or of, of checking it, or of putting the master barrel back in and using the go and the no-go. You're going to disassemble it and you're going to go one size larger from what we found with our four. And then you're going to repeat this procedure again to verify it. But once that go gauge goes in and the no-go does not or is very tight, that's when headspace is properly set. All right, if our timing needs to be adjusted, we're going to make sure we have a master barrel in. Then we have to remove the back plate, remove the drive rod spring, and you're going to loosen up the screw at the rear of the rear sight, dropping out the timing nut assembly. Sometimes you will not be able to adjust the nut without removing the assembly and you have to remove the trigger bar to be able to, to reach it.
here's our timing assembly, timing nut assembly. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this counterclockwise, making this, taking this nut all the way down. Once it's all the way down, we're going to reinstall this back onto the, onto the screw, making sure that pin sits in one of the grooves of the timing nut. So we've taken our timing nut all the way down, reinstall our trigger bar. Install our drive rod spring. And put the back foot on. Next, we are going to insert the fire gauge between the barrel extension and the trunnion block. And we are going to put the weapon on fire and attempt to fire. The weapon should not fire. At this point, take off the back plate, take off the spring, and we're going to loosen the timing nut assembly again. And this time, we're going to go up on the nut one notch. Our trigger bar on this weapon seems to be in the way. So now I'm going to go up one notch right there. Reinstall this into the screw. Drive rod spring, back plate, attempt to fire, weapon does not fire. And we're going to continue doing this process until the weapon fires. So we're going to drop that out, make sure you are watching what gap that screw comes out of, and we're going to adjust our nut, one more gap. And, com and com continue the process. What you can do is move it a few notches, make a bold adjustment, put this back and reinstall this. What we're looking for is the notch where it first fires as we're going back, as we're going up. fire does not fire so we need we need to still keep going up on the nut attempt to fire so the notch previous to this did not fire that one did fire now we are we had hit our our spot. So what we're going to do now is we're going to loosen this and we're going to go up two notches. So we just found our firing notch. We're going to go up two notches. One, two. Tighten this up. All right, so now we went up two notches. Now what we're going to do is we're going to charge the weapon to retract the firing pin. We're going to put in the no fire gauge. And we're going to make sure this weapon does not fire on the no fire. We're going to put the fire gauge in. And we are going to fire it. And now timing is now verified. All right, first gauging we're going to do is barrel erosion. The most common occurrence with barrel erosion is sometimes you'll get bad readings because the, there will be such a big carbon buildup in here where the operators fail to clean it or if they don't do the proper barrel changes uh, on the proper or after so many rounds or if they fail to clean it. And you'll get a lot of carbon buildup in there and you'll get different readings. But to do barrel erosion gauging, 
you have two gauges. You have the gauge itself and then you have a wear limit gauge. To the wear limit gauge purpose is to make sure that this gauge is, is good. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the gauge on the reject line. It's just like your M4 series where it has an embarkation line and a reject line. We're going to set it to the reject line and then we're going to take our wear limit gauge and pass it over this collet. So we're going to make sure that it has slight drag and if it does that means our gauge is good. So first section we're going to test is we're going to test the shorter, shorter section of the barrel. On the barrel it's marked with HB and AC, heavy barrel, aircraft barrel. We're doing a heavy barrel so we're going to make sure heavy barrel is right above this collar. Extend the gauge, run it in until it hits the collar and then you're going to put slight finger pressure on the back and take your reading. Once we've done that one we're going to remove the gauge move the collar down to the long section where heavy barrel is right above the collar here. Insert this into the barrel, slight finger pressure here, take our reading. If it fails in either section of the barrel, your barrel is unserviceable. Remove the gauge and we are complete with barrel erosion. All right, next check we're gonna do is our top cover latch clearance. Anytime this top cover comes off, is removed from the weapon, we have to we have to do this check. What you can do is take your feeler gauge, 0 0.020 inches, and you're going to try to push it over the top of the latch. And if you cannot get that in, that's good. All right, next, we're going to do the trigger bar lever clearance. You're going to remove the back plate, remove the drive rod spring, and you're going to pull the bolt back till it's one and a half inches from the inside edge of the barrel extension. And what you're going to do is you're going to push up on your Trigger bar, make sure your trigger bar is not dragging on top of your bolt. All right, the next one is our breech lock cam clearance. To do this check, you have to have the internals out of the receiver. Breech lock cam is on the bottom of the weapon. The maximum measurement for the breech lock cam is 0 .008 inches or 8 one thousandths of an inch. And what you're going to do is you're going to try to put this gauge in between the breech lock cam and the bottom plate and touch that nut. If this gauge does not go in, then our clearance is good. All right, next gauging is fire and pin protrusion. So what we're going to do, cock and lever to the rear, press on the sear. Our fire and pin protrudes. We're going to take our gauge. This one's a little different. It doesn't have a minimum maximum. It has a, a go and a not go. So the go should go across and touch lightly. The not go should also go across and touch lightly. The things that would fail is if the firing pin did not touch both sides lightly, or if on the not go side it hits hard or is prevented from going across. All right, the next gauge is our firing pin hole. Take our plug gauge and make sure this is, does not go into the firing pin hole. All right, next one is our buffer rod assembly. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your buffer in this tool, collapse it, Rotate 90 degrees, open it up, and remove the buffer. Once the buffer is removed, there's a nut inside the buffer, and then you use a buffer gauge. So when you put the go on top of the nut and you're going to put upward pressure, the top of the gauge should fall inside the cutout of the buffer. When you do the no go on top of the nut and you put upward pressure, the no go should hit the top of the gauge and not fall in inside the crease. If it did, then what we need to do is remove this cotter pin and adjust this nut until the gauging meets the requirements. All right, the next one is the receiver side plate clearance or the bolt latch clearance. So what you're gonna do is there's a window that it has to fall in between. There's two nuts on the side of the bolt latch that it has to fall between 0 .003 and 0 .005. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your feeler gauge and you're going to pass it along inside the nut, uh, in between the nut and the sidewall. If our gauging fa fails, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out our bolt, my bolt latch assembly and I'm going to inspect my, inspect my nut. So this nut comes, there's three different types that come with this. So you'll have one that's completely flat, you'll have one that's kind of concave, and then you'll have one with lettering on it. What you have to do, if you have the lettering or the, the curved one, you have to take a file and you have to file it down until it's completely flat because it, it has to uh, be completely flat against the sidewall. Now when we, when we reinstall this, 
what we're going to do is we're going to reinstall it with these nuts against the window, so we're, or against the sidewall. We're going to use these feeler gauges to make sure it falls within the window. If it does not fall within that window, we're going to take two crescent wrenches and we're going to put these on the nuts and we're going to adjust until we fall between that point zero zero three and point zero zero five. Okay, so if when you're gauging your breech lock cam, if more excessive than 0 0.008 and your gauging fails, like so, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to remove your breech lock cam. So you're going to cut, there should be safety wire here, cut the safety wire, take your pliers and screwdriver and loosen this nut. All right, so once you remove your breech lock cam, what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's completely flat against this bottom plate. A lot of times you'll get debris in here, which will cause an excessive gap. Also, when you get these new, uh, uh, right around here, around this, this raised edge, you'll have extra, extra metal from the factory that you're gonna have to file down to make sure that this breech lock cam sits completely flat against this bottom plate. Also, make sure you look in here, make sure this is all completely flat, there's no debris or anything that could cause that excessive gap. And then you're gonna flip it over. Check all these grooves, all these edges, make sure there's no burrs, and if there are, then you're going to file them or file them down. And then make sure this raised edge on the breech lock cam is smooth for the breech lock to, to go over, and if there's, then there's no rough edges. All right, and we're going to open up the top tray. Then you have your cartridge stops. You want to make sure that they're tight in place. Make sure you have spring tension on here. We're going to open, take the back plate off. We want to make sure we have spring tension on our bolt latch and trigger. Make sure our buffer plate is not loose. Mine spins, but if you want to make sure that this is tight, it doesn't loose. A uh, way to fix that is to add more buffer discs back there. Make sure spring tension on the two latches. And check our drive rod. Make sure there's not excessive flat spots on the springs. Make sure all the coils are intact and you don't have broken coils. Open it up. Okay, separate everything. First, we'll start with our barrel extension. What you want to do is rub your finger across all these smooth areas. Make sure there's no burrs. Make sure there's no gouges. If so, we can use, we can take a file and we can get some of the burrs out of there. Make sure the flat spring is intact. And we'll go down to the buffer assembly. Make sure the buffer body, these legs. You can't be loose, so pull on these, make sure there's not too much excessive play on those. On the bolt, when you take the bolt apart, a few things we got to look at on the bolt. When you take out the sear spring, Make sure you squeeze it between your fingers. You should not be able to completely compress that spring with your fingers. Check the grooves on the, the tracks on the bolt. Make sure there's not gouges or excessive burring on, on, the, on the bolt itself. Going back to the receiver, all these rivets, you need to make wiggle and check all these rivets. Make sure these rivets are not loose on the top plate, on the bottom plate. If you have a loose rivet, that is fine. A missing rivet, the gun is deadlined. One other thing with the rivets is if you do have a loose rivet, you can take your feeler gauge. If you can get .010 in all the way across the, the whole plate itself, then your gun is also deadlined. But if you have a loose rivet, make sure you check it with the feeler gauge. Uh, another place to check is make sure you're checking the receiver for any cracks, anything out of the ordinary as far as this goes. Uh, another thing is make sure you're checking your on your barrel extension. Make sure you're checking the threads and they're not, the barrel hasn't been cross-threaded or the threads aren't burred up, crushed or anything like that. Make sure your barrel extension is not cracked as well. Um, Another, another common occurrence. And that completes the preventative maintenance check.